everyone, this is Jamie Lee Mendoz, the flute expert on virtualsheetmusic.com. Today we're going to talk about Hamburger Sonata by C.P.E. Bach. Um, Carl Emanuel Philipp Bach uh, was a fifth son of J.S. Bach, and he's a figure uh, who's in between Baroque and Classical era. Um, I I think it's because of what Schumann said um, about C.P. Bach, but a lot of people tend to think um, he, was, uh, he wasn't as good of a composer as his father, J.S. Bach, uh, or uh, he wasn't as talented. But in my opinion, I think he, he, had, a, he had a very distinctive, um, his own style and strengths. Um, one of them um, is uh, these lyrical, very singable, sweet sounding melodies. Um, and so as a performer, I think it is important to bring out uh, uh, those qualities. So um, along with that, uh, I mean, as with any piece, I think one of the most important things is to pick the right tempo. Um, so for this piece, the, the same goes, uh, so it says Allegretto, um, and um, so it shouldn't be quite Allegro. Um, I see a lot of performers, a lot of flute players who picks a little too of a, an edgy tempo that, that sounds a little too um, unsettled. Um, to me, this, uh, especially the, the first movement, uh, particularly uh, should be a little relaxed and um, lyrical and sweet sounding movement. So um, maybe for me, it's something like this. So for me, it's easier to pick the right tempo when I think about what the keyboard uh, is playing. Um, so if you look at the full score, um, not just the flute part, then you'll see that the harpsichord um, or the piano uh, plays these eighth note uh, figures. Then, um, and then when you think about these eighth notes going a little faster, um, like Bum, 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 bum. Then, then, then that's already in the allegro um, uh, realm. So uh, I think it needs to sound a little bit uh, pulled back. Pum, 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 pum. Um, so that it stays in the allegretto or um, even closer to andante um, tempo. So if you pick that comfortable tempo for you, then the rest is pretty easy. Um, but one more thing that uh, you want to keep in mind when you think about your accompaniment uh, is that since the harpsichord or the piano is playing these eighth note figures, uh, it's very easy to follow those eighth notes and then play, uh, play uh, along with those beats. So. Uh, you know what I mean? So um, instead of uh, actually feeling those beats, I think it's, it is uh, much better to actually um, think about the big picture and uh, think about the whole phrase. So the, the first phrase goes until, um, until the fourth measure, actually. So then it'll sound more like... So, so it'll sound a little bit um, whole. Um, so uh, that that applies to the rest of the piece. So you know, always thinking about longer phrases. Um, another thing uh, that I'd like to stress is a little bit of a rubato. Whenever you have a repetitive uh, 16th note figures, for example, in uh, the measure 15, So I'm not quite uh, spending too much time on uh, the first note or the first note of each beat. I'm not, I'm not quite like pressing them down, but it is nice to give them a little bit of a shape. 
by, uh, by doing a very slight rubato. So uh, let me play uh, one more time. Yeah, so that way, that way it sounds like there is a structure. Um, another thing that I'd like to uh, uh, point out is um, if you look at uh, the measure maybe 35 and 36, uh, we have these uh, 32nd and then 16th notes runs, and then we have 16th, 16th uh, rests. So um, it's very easy to be late on those notes after the rests. Um, so just be ready. Don't don't uh, relax your embouchure. Uh, just be ready right there, and so that the the those note those sixteenth notes are right on the beat. Yeah. Um, again, uh, you can do a little bit of uh, rubato on the first uh, first note of uh, on the first notes of each thirty second groups. to do a little bit of ritardando uh, as you saw in the measure 38 and then um, do uh, uh, those um, uh, coming up figures uh, be as a prep to go back into the the original tempo but it's up to you you don't have to you don't have to do that um, that's just uh, my personal um, addition um, and uh, the last thing I'd like to talk about is the high notes. Um, not all of the high notes in this movement, but uh, most of them are not on the strong beat. That means we want to treat them very lightly. So uh, don't stress them because, you know, on the flute, it's so easy to stress high notes because, you know, it's high notes and, you know, um, on the flute, uh, that's one of our... Um, pride right uh, to play very loud and big high notes um, but um, when you play uh, pieces like this um, you, we want to really um, have those delicate and gentle sounding high notes so especially uh, in the measure uh, 55 for example uh, let me demonstrate from the measure before Instead of really hitting that note very, very hard, uh, just kind of lift it. Of course, in order to do this successfully, you would have to have a very good pressure, uh, very good support, uh, but also a very strong embouchure that uh, I talked about in my uh, first video. Uh, so those things are the, I would say, the main points um, of uh, this movement. Um, uh, and unfortunately, I don't think uh, I can cover the second movement as well in this video. But if you if you would like me to go over the second movement as well in a separate video, then uh, leave a comment down below, uh, not on YouTube, but uh, on virtualsheetmusic.com. Um, and uh, on a side note, uh, if you would like me, uh, if you would like to hear uh, me perform this whole piece with the harpsichord. Um, along with some of other uh, Telemann quartets uh, and Mozart and uh, Jay Spock, uh, then uh, you're welcome to come to uh, 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 our concerts. Uh, our concert on June 4th, uh, that's Saturday. Um, if you're in Los Angeles area, uh, then um, I would like to uh, see you there. Um, uh, if you would like to come, then uh, leave a comment down below as well so that I can uh, give you the venue address and the time and more details about it as well. Um, so um, I hope uh, that was helpful and I hope all of you have a great June and I will see you in July. <laughs>